So, okay, so this is a basic data manipulation session using an office software program, Excel. Uh, and which is both accessible to most people and powerful. So in fact, it has a great potential for both data manipulation and analysis. However, when it comes to analysis, there are specific uh, software tools and also free software tools that make the process easier, such as Jamovi as Laura uh, already presented. So in the next section, in the next session, we will go in deeper into data manipulation and data analysis using a statistical software for those who need more advanced insights. And if we have time at the end of this session, I will introduce you. So those that are not planning to take the advanced session can still get an idea of, of how it works. And um, so here is uh, uh, an index of, of what we will we'll cover. We will cover the basics of data manipulation in Excel, as I said before. And we will start by importing data from a CSV file and, and then move on to, the, on to working with cells and understand, understanding how to apply functions for data analysis and then using filters to sort and manage the information. And finally, we will explore the power of pivot tables to summarize and analyze uh, data efficiently. Uh, so I plan to organize, organize the session by providing a brief explanation of all the concepts we will be working on and how they are applied in the program. And after that, after each introduction to each uh, uh, concept, uh, I will propose like short exercises that we can solve together. So maybe I will leave a little bit, uh, no, uh, uh, present the exercise so you think a little bit how to solve it and then we, we solve it together. So therefore it is important that you have the data set with, we, we will be working with. Uh, which is a small extraction of the data from the Covates website that most of you uh, or already know. And uh, so I think uh, we've shared it uh, through Drive. So so yeah. it will be... Yeah, it is already in the, in the chat. If you go to the chat, there is a link to the Drive with the two documents that uh, we are working with. So you can download it and... Okay, perfect. So let's let's start. Uh, so in Excel, we can create uh, tables in various ways. So you can start by directly entering the data into cells to create new tables, making Excel highly flexible for simple data input. But also Excel allows you to open existing tables providing an easy way to continue working with previous saved files. So in this sense, uh, I, I wanted to start with this because most, most of you um, have uh, uh, data, the data sets uh, in other formats than, uh, than Excel, like SVS, CSV files. So uh, Excel supports importing tables from other formats such as SV file, S CSV files with particular that is uh, particularly useful when working with data from external sources or other programs. So it is important to note that for efficient data manipulation and subsequent analysis, having a well-structured database is crucial. And typically this involves in organizing the data into a grid where rows represents observations such as individuals or cases, and columns represents vari variables uh, or characteristics collected uh, from the individuals. So this structure, which is very important to have this structure, so this is like before doing anything, having clear that for data analysis, we need a, 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 an efficient structure of the data for uh, 
follow-up studies. And this structure ensures that your data is easy to work with, making both manipulation analysis more efficient and accurate. Uh, also, other points to, to take into account is that uh, variables in databases are incorporated usually in numeric format. And this, is, uh, this allows post-processing programs to operate more efficiently and reduces the likelihood of errors during data entry. That's why we, when we have databases, we see uh, uh, instead of uh, labels, many times we have uh, uh, numerical entries. So when the information uh, entered this, uh, when the information is entered correctly and consistently, it not only stems analysis but also enhances the integrity of the data set. So additionally, having a code book is crucial as it provides a detailed description and labeling of each variable. And this documentation serves as a reference, ensuring that the users can accurately interpret the data and understand the context of each variable within the data set. So this is, uh, I just wanted to say this because we will start uh, importing data from CSV files in this grid format. Uh, most of the variables that we will see are uh, on the data that I provided to you are uh, 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 numerical. And also uh, accompanying this data set, there is a code book explaining uh, what all the uh, numbers uh, mean. Okay, so uh, here, so how do we import these CSV files in into Excel? Uh, first, we have to open the Excel and go to go to data the data tab and from there select get the external data so if you if you type in the in the toolbar data from the excel and uh, you will see all these options here and uh, one is uh, the uh, text text uh, form so once uh, you if you click here you will you will then locate the CSV file into your computer and you will click import and the Excel then will guide you through a wizard for, um, uh, for, uh, to format your data where you can select the delimiters. So what is a CSV file? A CSV file is a comma separated uh, data set, comma or semicolon. So uh, it is uh, the uh, how you see this file is not as uh, the usual way that you see if you import directly or you uh, or you um, write or, or construct your data set in the Excel. So as you can see here, the wizard guides you and you see the next uh, how how are the variables delimited? So comma separated delimited or comma com, uh, or semicolon separated delimited. As you can see here in this toy example that that I I put in this figure. So you have say um, if you if you say that this uh, delimited file, you then following the wizard, you you then go to the screen where you have to set which is the the limiter. Uh, uh, Operator. So here you have different options. So you have to see uh, which is your delimiter. In this case, for example, is the comma. So we click on the comma, and then uh, uh, you see uh, uh, after clicking this, you see how the data is rearranged in columns as we are more used in Excel uh, when working in Excel files. So once you do this, you end up into your spreadsheet here at the end with your uh, data arranged as you expect with rows indicating who which are the uh, each case analyzed and columns indicating which are the characteristics or the variables that we are collecting from each individual okay so this is like the step 
zero. And I wanted to start with this because most most of, of you uh, start, uh, if you work with the COVID test data set from the website, you start uh, the latest version uh, is this type of, of, of file, right? So once saying this, here comes the first exercise where uh, uh, we, I, I would like that we, we all together import this CSV file that uh, it's called HIV test web webinar dot CSV. And this is the file that uh, we will use for the following up exercises. So, uh, as I said, maybe uh, if uh, I leave like a minute for each exercise, you will see that uh, the exercises proposed here are very, very simple step, little step, little step, we are starting from this importing data. And then we will, we will manipulate and, comp and compute and, and analyze further this data. Okay. So just a second, I... you should have this code book. Uh, so two files, the, the CSV file, as I told you, and the code book that, that, that accompanies the, the, the database uh, format data. So you have, uh, and the first column is this code book, uh, the questions as, it, as you can see it in the website, what is the variable name and what is the variable name extraction in the database. And also the values that, uh, that uh, you should see for uh, the specific variable and the type of, type of variable. For example, the, the second variable you will see is uh, the date of visit, which is a variable of type date. And you should see this as this, okay? And also we have uh, the gender variable with different values. As I told you, uh, it, is, it, it is advisable that the variables are included as numbers numerically for the reasons that I already explained to you before. So one is men this, and two is woman this, et cetera. So, so if, if, if you analyze and manipulate the data, you should always have the code book next to you to see uh, what are the values of the variables. So uh, as I said, um, let's, let's uh, I, I gave, well, we had already a couple of minutes. <laughs> while I was explaining you the data. So maybe if you have started importing this, you should have gone through this. Um... Sorry, but I don't see it very well. So the presentation, you will see that the screenshots of the of the Excel, it's in English, but my working Excel, it's in my language, it's in Catalan. So you will so you will see the toolbars are in Catalan, but I I will I will uh, indicate when it's needed or or essential how how what how you how is it called this in English. So uh, we want to, as I said, we want to import data. So we have to go to the data tool uh, option. So here, as I told you before, there are the options that how, what type of data you want, data you want to import. In this case, we want to import text data. So uh, here uh, we have to go. Also, I have the data placed in this folder. And uh, as uh, we are using this HIV test webinar. So I click on import and the wizard tells me what, uh, step by step how, how to, how to uh, proceed. So it is a delimited file. So, okay. Uh, and now I have to tell 
which is the the limit the the limited uh, uh, option. And here you can see when you open a text file, uh, maybe sometimes uh, the files are saved with comma delimited, but sometimes as I, as I tell you, uh, they are saved as semicolon. So you should find a selling semicolon in my in my case is here, and 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 tick the comma the colon, and you will see <clears throat> right away how the uh, variables are placed as columns as we expect. So if we go. We go to the final. We will start placing the data set in this first cell, okay? And we have our data. So this is what we all should have, no? This, uh, this, these columns and about two hundred and seventy-nine rows in this file. I'm going a little bit slow because maybe uh, you are uh, uh, downloading the data. So, okay. Uh, once we have uh, our Excel, though, so that 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 is a, a typical database, a grid with rows and columns. This is essential uh, for data manipulations. We should not have like uh, other things um, around the grid, like uh, uh, like counting things in the spreadsheet, because because then it's not a database. We should have only the the database. And once we have this, um, let's let's uh, explain a little bit the content of the Excel. So, in terms of cells, there are three different types types of cells within the grids of a spreadsheet: the literal, constant, and formula. So, literal cells contain text or alphanumeric character, characters, which are used to label data or provide context within the spreadsheet. Then we have constants, cells that hold fixed values such as numbers or text that do not change unless uh, manually edited those values. And lastly, we have formulas. So literals, constants would be like this. And then we have formulas. And the formulas contain uh, expressions that calculate calculate values based on the contents of other cells. So these formulas allow for dynamic calculations and updates. For example, here in this toy example, no, this is a, a, a typical formula. No, so we, we have a little uh, data set with originally three columns, three variables or characteristics, uh, and we, only, we have the sex, the weight, and height. And we want to calculate or to compute another variable into the same data set containing information that uh, uh, comes from other variables from this same data set, like VMC, body mass index, no? that it would be like the weight divided by the height in meters squares. So, so how, how is the entry of the formula with an equals? And then we say, so D5 would be, this, this D5 indicates that we are in column D and row five. So this would be the weight of this uh, case divided by the height of this case, which is uh, uh, one meter and 60. That's why we divide by, by by 10 and the square, okay? So this is about the uh, cell contents. Something also important in Excel. Uh, uh, in Excel, we have the ability to format cells, to display, to display information is in specific formats that suit our needs. For example, we can format cells to show dates in various styles, time in different formats, quantities as, as numbers or decimals, 
currency with appropriate symbols. We can additionally represent numbers as fractions and scientific notation or as percentages. So proper formatting enhances the readability and presentation of our data. It's making it easier to interpret it and analyze uh, downstream analysis, okay? So by clicking, uh, right-clicking on the cells that we wish to format, we can access to the list of available, see here, to a list of uh, available uh, formatting options. Uh, uh, this context menu allows us to choose from various formats enabling us to customize how the data is displayed. So whether we want to change the number format to currency, to percentage, or to date, this feature provides a, a straightforward way to ensure that our information is presented in the most appropriate format for our, format for our analysis, right? The program, we have to say that the program usually automatically identifies the format of the cells based on the first cell in a particular com column, excluding the header. However, it is important to, ver to verify that this, co this is correctly identifying the format, right? So this ensures that the data is processed accurately and displayed as we, as we wish. So once uh, we come to the second exercise uh, where we want to go to, to, the, to the data set that we, from the exercise, the COVA test uh, example, or little extraction, where, and we want to review, there are two variables as, I, as uh, we saw, two variables, the variable date of the visit, and date of birth. So we want to ensure that these two variables uh, are in date format. And if not, we want to convert them into the correct format. So this is the, the first step that we wish to do, we, wish, we would like to do. And the second one is use the appropriate, now that we know how to um, compute a uh, new variable using formulas. So I use the appropriate formula to calculate the age based on the date of the birth and the date of the visit of, of the client here. Okay. So we go back to our Excel and first step, we need to see if the formats of these two variables are the date, uh, date formatting. If not, we have to change it. So remember that we have to place the, the mouse into the cells that we want to revise and right click and see whether we have the, the, um, the formats. And if so, then we have to calculate the age. So we, it is, the it, it uh, this is one of the um, of the advantages thing uh, things of of of, you, of using Excel that you don't have to enter manually the age you can you can use formulas to to enter the age, right? I'm just waiting a little bit if if. If you tried to to resolve the the exercise, and then we will do it together. So if you are trying to to do the exercises and have problems or or whatever, uh, feel free to stop me and and ask me whatever problems you're having or not.
So here, how do we see, uh, uh, how, how do we check if we have the appropriate format? So uh, we have to select the column that we want to check. We have the two dates here. So we will start with the date of visit. We click, right click, and we go to the format cells here. It says format cells. So if you click here, you will see all the, the list of formatting options that we have. So if we do not see that the, the Excel has automatically uh, uh, identified the column as the, with the format that we want to, we have to uh, put in here, click the option that we want. Right here is the date, data. So we ensure that we have here the format desired. And here also we have, we need to see whether the formatting is the correct one. So now that we 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 check whether we have the, the appropriate format. The second uh, exercise that we want to do here is to calculate the age. So we will compute another column here, what we will call, we will call age. And this is just the age we will just um, calculate as the difference between the two, uh, the, the two days, the dates of the birth, uh, the date of the visit minus the date of the birth, right? Birth. So how do we do a formula? We, we uh, start by uh, including the equal symbol. This is how we start the formula, right? And we say, uh, we want to make the difference between column B and column C. So we select the first cell of column B minus the first cell of column C. So here we already have the difference between these two dates. But the difference of two dates in Excel is uh, the difference in days. So if we want the age in years, we just have to divide. So we, we have to divide by the number of days that we have in within a year. How do we do this in Excel? We just, we would just uh, say, okay, this difference has to be divided by the number of uh, days we have. Okay, so we have here the age of the, the first uh, case in our data set. So we can copy this, scroll down, and we will copy these formulas all the way down. Or we can just place our mouse here in the uh, bottom right corner and we will all we we will uh, incorporate all the ages, right? Another thing that we see here, for example, is that we we have the age with uh, comma no with comma separate uh, with decimals. We can we can format this as a number, and we say okay, for visualizing purposes, we do not want all these decimals here. So we can again format the data by clicking right, format the cells. These are numbers, so nombra it's numbers, so we can click numbers. And the decimal positions, we don't want decimals. And we will see the ages we are used to. We will see, we can use uh, other formulas, more more like advanced formulas. Maybe we will see uh, later on, but uh, now that we only know how to operate and not use functions, that it's the next step, this would be the way to, uh, to, to perform the analysis. 
right? So we have already computed one new variable. So let's continue. So the next concepts are the concepts on we, we know how to import, we know how to, to compute a variable, we you know a format, a format the, the, the variables, we know how, how to include, incorporate a new variable now. We will uh, introduce the functions, uh, which is uh, uh, very important uh, to manipulate data. So a function is a subroutine that executes when it is called. So functions uh, allow to the users to perform calculations and manipulations efficiently. So they can use, they can be used to carry out a wide range range of, of, of tasks, like from simple arithmetic to complex data analysis. So Excel provides uh, a vast variety of functions but we also can have the option to write our custom options manually, taking into account those specific requirements. And for example, here we have this example so where we have the age and we would like to compute the average of the ages of the, of the uh, individuals that we have in our data set. So we have a, a function that it's called average, right? So uh, oh, oh, sorry, uh, so so we will just have to say, okay, call the average function. I will go deeper in how to how how to implement these functions, but as just to have a quick a quick uh, vision of this, you just you just have to write down the the function. And here, as you see, you have to say, uh, what is the range of cells of values where we have to, from where we want to calculate the average, right? Okay. So uh, one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that functions are named differently depending on the programming language, okay? But Excel has uh, the option to, to translate translate functions from one language to another. I say this because maybe, uh, uh, no, I, for example, I have my Excel in, in Catalan, others may have uh, Excel in Italian or well, well whatever languages uh, we, we have here. So um, if uh, one useful thing that I, I want to show you also is that uh, you, can, you can translate uh, within the Excel the the function numbers, I um, the function uh, terms, right? So here, well, in the in the slide, you can see in the slide you you see uh, the steps you have to take. But I maybe I can show you this here in the Excel. So this is something that will help for all of us go together. So in Excel, you may have a, an option in the toolbar called revision. So here in revision, you will see a translate button. If you click, he, click here, you will see this wizard here where you can say, okay, for example, uh, the function average with ca that calculates the average of some numbers. So I want to see how this function is called in my language. For example, in the language that I have my program installed. Here, average, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the term in an English term. So I want to see what uh, how it's called this um, this uh, function in my language which is Catalan and here for example you will you you can you can try this with with your Excel in in if you are not using an English an English Excel so uh, in my case 
this function would, would be called Mijana, right? So uh, this is nice if you if if we if while well, we, we are explaining all the concepts here and we will use some functions, you can see how these functions are called in your Excel uh, uh, language. Okay. So going back to the presentation. Uh, so the functions can also be written using the assistant. Uh, so the Excel provides a function wizard that guides you through the process of creating formulas, right? So uh, you will see in your Excel, there is like, like this symbol, an F, which is which uh, will bring you to the to the wizard, and this is this assistant simplifies the function creation process and offers you step by step approach, allowing you to select the desired function and the input required uh, for these functions functions, and by using these assist assistants uh, also you can ensure that, that uh, you are using the correct syntax and the correct parameters for the, the purpose, making, making the analysis easier. To, for example, here the, for the average function, then uh, you, can, you, will, you will be uh, brought to the, to, to the help. And you will have to include, no? So the, what's the parameters that you use to include inside the function? So the range of values from cell number two in column A to cell number 18, where it's, uh, it's the end of the, of, of the numbers of this variable in this uh, small data set. So there are functions that do not need parameters, such as the function today that I'm showing here, which returns, for example, these functions returns uh, the current date without requiring any additional input. So if, if you see right now, what, what do you do? You include the, the equal, the name of the function, and uh, inside the um, the intervals you have to put uh, the parameters if they are needed. In this case, they are need. They, in this case, it is not needed, right? But on the other hand, there are functions that do need parameters to operate effectively. For example, here I put an example of a function that it's called uh, rand between. Uh, that it, it is a function that, that generates random numbers. What does the, this function needs? Needs two values. So uh, it means that, for example, we will need a the, the minimum value and the max, no, in this case, zero, so, sorry, and the maximum value, in this case, 100. And it, it means that it will generate a random number between this interval, within this interval. If you compute this, uh, uh, execute this function into Excel, you will see uh, as a result here, uh, a random number. And in this other function where we do not need parameters to include, you will see the date of the date. Um, So in the following slides, I will present some useful functions uh, that will help us to, to, to compute the indicators, for example, that we, that we want to compute in for the COVID-19 reports, for example. So I will start with the function counted. This function counts the numbers of records or individuals that meet a specified condition. Okay, for example, uh, if you want to count how many entries in a data set are greater than a certain, a certain value or how many individuals meet a particular criterion, this function count if 
allows you to perform this calculation. So how do you do this? You specify the range of cells uh, and the condition. See, so so if you if you want to count here, count how many females you have in this data set, so you will use the function COUNTIF. COUNTIF needs two parameters. One is the range of values where you want to search, in this case, from, from A, A2 to A18. And after the semicolon, you have to put the criterion. OK, so in this case, I want to count how many females we have in this small data set. If you do so, you end up in this uh, result, which is uh, uh, you see that you have seven females here. Instead of counting manually, you already end up with a with a solution here. Okay. Uh, so in this next example, for example, we start with a slightly more complex criteria. Now we want to count how many individuals are younger than. 20 years old, here, yes. And so to, what does it mean? Before we, if, if you see the difference in the, in, the, in the previous example, we had like a, a criteria of a single value. In this example here, we have a criteria which contains a range of values. So the age is a numerical variable and we want to count how many uh, uh, cases here are over no under twenty or over to, over twenty, so so it is it is a, as easy as before. So you you include the range where you want to search, and then after the semicolon you put the criteria. The criteria is less than twenty. So if you uh, write down this on an Excel cell, in whatever Excel Excel cell you end up. With, uh, with your result. In this case, we have four younger than, younger than 20. And I want to stop just here, uh, one thing, because uh, here I'm uh, to, to explain how, how you perform this type of, of, of formulas here. And I, I put the, the, um, the function in the same split sheet or where I have my data, my data set, which is not Good practice. We we should do we should compute this in in other on other split sheets like like the Excel file has. Uh, let's go. Uh, I mean, we we should we could um, create a new split sheet and count things here. As I said before, the database is a database and should be clean. Because if then this we want to import this this data set database to other uh, SOPs like the, the software that we we will use in the next session, and uh, we we need a, a clean database. But just, this is just a KitKat to 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 make clear what I I said before. Okay. So at this point, uh, I propose a third exercise to, to, to see, to just play a little bit and, and try to use this, this function to count. In our example, for example, my, uh, my proposal is to count how many clients in the data set have taken the HIV test. And as I said, place the result not in the same spreadsheet, but in another spreadsheet, so so that we keep our database clean and clear. Okay. So remember to uh, the variable or the column that. That, uh, that, that contains this information. It's called HIV uh, slash test slash perform, which has two, two different values. One, if the test has been performed, and two, if the test has not been performed. So we can count 
within Excel, how many ones we have here in this column K. Here also, uh, I I told you that the the, um, the function in English is count if we can we can uh, search how this function it's called in in our Excel language. So in my case, for example, here. will be compta but each 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 of us will have our uh, their own language so we can in the other excel spreadsheet within the same workbook we even we, we cannot do it outside or it is not as easy to do it outside. So, so we can do uh, how many tests, and we can here. I will have to say which is an interval, as I said, is uh, HIV test performance. So I can select, select. Okay, if you, if you do, here is the, I, I have included, the range of values here, if you see the range of values, uh, it's K2 to, to K279. But if you see here, since I'm computing the, the function in another uh, spreadsheet within the, in another sheet uh, within the same Excel workbook, uh, we have to say that this, this is, this range of values come from the first sheet that's why we we call it the first sheet if you if you see here it's called full full one so it says k2 to k 279 from this sheet okay and uh what is the criteria here one no we have to see value one so here we see that we have 58 tests performed in here in this data set. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, do you have so far any questions? Okay. If not, I... Is there no difference between uh, average and median? Uh, see, the, the yes, the average is is like it's it's like the center, but the center in terms of of gravity. I mean, you sum the numbers and divide by the by the by the total, right? And the median is like a value that divides in two equal parts the data. Yes. So what we what it's better to use when you have the final data to what to ch check? This this depends. So uh, usually if if you are so the average and the median or the yes are uh, st uh, st uh, functions or statistics the measures that are um, uh, useful for numerical data, right? 
So when this depends on the distribution of the data, if the distribution of your data is like very um, symmetric, let's say it's like like you no know, like this like this distribution that 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 has like a peak in the middle, you no know, and uh, yeah, in your left or in, in the left side and uh, right side of the of this center, it's like it's like the split is similar, you use average. But when the median is, uh, when the variable is not that sym symmetric, usually people use uh, median, okay? So this, this you need like a, uh, to calculate one or the other one, both, both are for, for see what, how, where do we have the center of this variable, right? Both measures. But one is more appropriate when symmetry, and the other one is more appropriate when not symmetry. This how, how how can you check plots of the distribution of the values of the variables are are useful in this case. So uh, this we will do this uh, this in the next session. Okay, so we will plot uh, variables, numerical variables, see the distribution, and see. Okay, in this case we will need the the average. In this case the median. Could you show how open the bow to translate when you click on the revision button? How to, sorry, wait. So I will, I will do it again. You mean, you mean uh, this, no, the, the translation, uh, do you mean, I, sorry, I don't see the chat while I'm, I'm sharing, so I, I cannot. See, but but you mean to 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 show again, right? So in here in the toolbar, you will see revision. In my case, revision in, in Catalan, in English, revision. Here, and in the panel, you will see the transaction, no, uh, or something like uh, uh, in English uh, language or translation. And if you click here, you will go to the search function and you will see here. Now we were saying average or oh, average from English to whatever language. I don't know. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think the, yeah, the person wrote, uh, thanks. So, okay. 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 So should I move on? I don't see the, the chat, sorry. There are more. Uh, more there questions. are no more questions in the chat. Okay, okay. So uh, let's let's keep with, um, with the functions. Then I move to the function if, which is also a very useful function that determines the value of a cell, of a cell based on a specific condition. So the basic syntax for the if function is, uh, so, so the thing is, you determine where the value, um, uh, if, if, you, if a, a specific criteria is meet, you will, you will uh, provide one value and the, if the criteria is not met, you will provide another value, right? So, so as you see here, uh, this is the if function, and you, and in these examples, for an example that I'm showing here, uh, we want to categorize individuals are no uh, 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 cases under no with age under twenty five or age uh, over twenty five. Also, this is also something something useful that we 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 can do now with our database in the context of Covates, where you don't have um, the age categorized as we wish, but we want to to calculate indicators disaggregated based on age of younger and older. So so you can you can compute this uh, in very easily in Excel. And the function uh, needs the criteria here. We want if if the cell E2 is uh, 
follows the criteria that it's below 25, what is the, the, the met criteria result? Lower than 25. Otherwise, semicolon uh, greater or equals to 25, right? So if you, uh, uh, after executing the formula, you will see the output reflecting the age categorization for each individual in the data set. So cells will show under 25 for those meet the condition of being younger and, and while others will display uh, over 25. Right. Okay, so we can do this in our uh, data set. We will categorize. Let's go and calculate. We have our our uh, age variable. We will we will compute the age categorized, right? One thing, so I, I will I will go through the search function. I, I'm saying I uh, want to use the function if in English. How is it how is it called in external in my language? Uh, I will put here whatever your language, here my, my language Catalan, and you see that my, in my language is C. So here I have to put my function C. And then start like all the functions, the name of the function, parentheses, inside the parentheses, the parameters. And the parameters are the first parameter, the, the criteria that I have to meet. The criteria is that in this case, column O should be lower than 25. If it's lower than 25, we will categorize this as lower than 25 years old within as, uh, columns, uh, if you see that, that we put the parameters. Otherwise, otherwise is the third parameter. So this is a function. Until now, we've seen functions that only have to include one parameter, functions two parameters, and in this case, three parameters, the, the functions. And all the parameters that the functions meet to incorporate in order to, to execute what we want to execute uh, should be semicolon uh, spaced. Okay, so here greater than 25. Okay, so uh, in this case we have, uh, of, uh, as you can see, no. Uh, a uh, client that is over 25 years old. So now we can copy all these throughout the, the column. So we will see you know, the ones that are over and lower than 25. So we now uh, you, uh, can categorize. So the if function, allows us to categorize variables that we have in a numerical format in the original data set. Okay. Let's move all, uh, all forward. So, um, sorry, uh, the function and uh, so this function is used to check multiple conditions at once. So returning true if all specified conditions are met and false otherwise. So if we want to determine, for example, if an, um, a case is a, a young female, so we have like two conditions that have to be met in once. How do we do this in Excel? So we use the uh, function and, and the function and uh, needs here two parameters. And the two parameters are the two conditions here that we have to meet, right? So in this example, we, we want uh, to see, uh, to identify which of the rows or the cases are uh, young males. So we have 
one condition here, semicolon, the other condition on the right hand side of the of the formula. Okay. So what 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 will this return? This will do, this will return a false if the criteria is met and is not met, and the true if the if the two criteria are met. Okay. So for example, uh, uh, executing this here, we have a mail uh, that uh, it's uh, older than twenty five. Though so the criteria is not met. It's met. Or with for one of the of the conditions, but it's not met for the other of the condition. Okay. So in our context, for example, here we want to create the variable PWIT, indicating a person who injects drugs if they report drug use and in the, an injection. Okay. How do we see this in our database? In our Cova test extraction, uh, we we should see the variable drug use equals one and injecting equals one. If you see here, we go to our code book, right, and we see. Uh, sorry, drug use one is yes, two is no, and then uh, if 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 a drug is used, the different types of 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 use, and we have the injecting uh, one, which is one yes, two no, etc. So how do we do this in Excel? So we now we want to create a key population. For example, in in our uh, database periods. So. Again, we are using function and how is it called in uh, my Excel language? Uh, you, know, you click here and you see the output. I so here in in my language the function and it's called e. Sorry. So we have to include logic value one and logic value two. So logic value one is drug use. Should be a drug user. And the second option is a, uh, if, if also it's injecting. So the second column should be also one. So here it's false because no, this this case it's it's a not a non P with uh, uh, identifier because both variables uh, well it's not using drugs and if it's not it should be said it should say no here. So since the two options are not met, we say false. So most in this case we we. We don't see uh, pivots here. Actually, we could well, what could what could we do here now? Here we already have our categorization pivots, none or yes. False would would mean no here, and truth would mean yes here. Um, we can use. The, the function count if that we were explaining before to see, to count how many pidwits we have in our data set. So this is, we, we have to go back to the function that we were explaining before, count if, and say how, and we could count how many uh, injectors do we have in our data set? So I would say count if in the function in my, in my language is count C. And now I will go to this cell. So 
sorry, not to these cells, to these all the cells here. The range of values. Be be careful that when you when you select the range of values into another sheet from the same working uh, work, work, work Excel uh, working Excel, we have to make sure that we are selecting the appropriate sheet here. The program itself changed the sheet name from the original data, it's one, so we have to change here. So, okay, we have now the range of values and what is the criteria that has to meet? Uh, truth in my language is set. Do we have? Sorry. Okay, it seems we don't have three weeks here. I thought there were were a couple. Sorry. Yeah, but Georgia, um, yes, I, I'm doing all this also, and I checked that at least there are one case, and it appears as fail fails. It's yes. For example, the case. Uh, the 51 line yes no no there should be one i don't know why i know 51 case yeah yeah that one that was you were yes this is one and one so it has okay. to be a set instead of false but i did the same and it also fails in my case i don't know Sorry, I just need. It should not. Hmm. I know it should say one. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's not the fifty one. Sorry, it's uh, the H E. Uh, it's the. No. It's not this one. No. No, no. no, no it's it's, it's, the, it's the the uh, the two thousand eighteen line. <laughs> Set now, yes, now ah, it's set. Okay, it's, it's, it's set. So it's in my case that it's false. I don't know why. <laughs> maybe, maybe when it's numeric, uh, uh, you don't, you need, don't need to put the, the, the quotations. Just, uh, yeah, let me check. Just maybe remove the quotations and you will, you know, maybe we'll see the correct one. And in this case, now that it's well, <laughs> that well, in my case, there are because I, I knew there were two pivots, so so I should find two. So when I count, count if the number of truths okay. in this range, you should see two. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was the code the codes without the code Michael then it works yeah. then it works okay yes when it's uh usually when it's number you don't need the quotation and actually in this case it you it, it is mandatory that you as you as you see that you don't put the quotation mark here okay uh let's move forward I think. I will go a little bit faster because I think we end up in 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 ten minutes. So I, I and I wanted to 
to use other functions on or pivotal pivotal tables which are important and uh, so uh, for example the function or makes the um, this function evaluates multiple conditions but returning true if at least one of the two criteria are are met okay so uh, here if if we want to determine if a uh, case is either a female or a young person right so yeah, it's the same as i see if the if um only one of the two options are met you return true otherwise false okay so we can do, for example, here, one of the key populations that are important to construct in our context of the co-test is the uh, MSM population, right? So, so uh, and how this is defined usually is defined, uh, 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 or the last definition that you have in the, um, in the indicators uh, manual is, uh, it comes from the construction of, of two variables. So one variable, uh, one, it should be a cisgender men or transgender men. And the other one is that has to, uh, so the MSM is defined as a uh, cis men or trans men and a, a, that has uh, had sex with, uh, with men. Uh, so if whether they report sexual relations with cisgender men or transgender men, okay, <laughs> hope this, I, I, I made this clear. So we can, we can perform or compute these variables by first uh, constructing this variable men, then this variable sex with men, which is this variable, variable men would be uh, constructed using the function or uh, cis men or trans men. Another variable that will be constructed also using the um, function or, which is a uh, uh, report sexual uh, relationships uh, with uh, cisgender men or transgender men. And then once we have con constructed these two variables, we, we will construct a third one that is our key uh, variable, the MSM, which will, will be constructed as uh, using the function and, no, men. The, we have constructed the variable men and the variable sex with men, okay? So we can do this very quickly. Now I'm, I'm moving forward a little bit faster, so so we can do. This so, for example, uh, the first one. We have to it has to be. In. Or right or. That we say. Uh, gender equals one and we go to our code book always the code book next to us Memphis is it's it's labeled um, a value uh, with one and trans men with four right so we have to go here one is one and the other one is Okay, so we already have this one. And then we have the other variable sex with men. Okay. It's another or, so the function or. What is the criteria? The criteria is that as Here we have a, a, a variable that, that we will call the criteria is with one variable 
and the second criteria, sex with men cis and sex with men trans, which is another variable, should be one. Okay. And if we, I will close this. And we already have the two variables. It's like, like a uh, middle step to end to the final step, which is the and, right? So here we will uh, use the to obtain the final, no, the key variable, which is the variable MSM that we do not have in our original data set. We will need to use the uh, the function and that in my Excel language is I. So here is this it was okay. So criteria it has a, in it should be a true in the variable men and a true the variable sex with men. So if we do those, we end up with our final data set. Okay, uh, I think I, I, I can stop here because we are all uh, almost, uh, we almost run out of time. And the next con uh, concept is already the analysis, those with pivotal tables to calculate the indicators. So I can move this to the next section very quick. And because we will do this more efficiently, the analysis, the statistical analysis with the Jamovi uh, uh, software, statistical software. So I think it's a good time to, to stop with the data manipulation with Excel and, and uh, do the next the next steps, next session.